Okay guys, I'm going to bench test these servo motors. I'm using uh, Centroid's Technical Bolt in 155. So let's get started with that. Um, I've got a good quality Fluke 77 Series 3 multimeter here. It's got good leads on it. Um, so let's get started. So it says with the motor cable wires and shaft completely disconnected, spin the motor shaft with your fingers. It should turn fairly easily. And this one does. And this one does as well. This is a much newer motor than this one. This one has a little bit of brush noise. But the bearings, you know, I don't feel any crunchiness, but you can hear a little brush noise there. It says if the motor shaft is very difficult to turn, you may have internally shorted winding or something is physically resisting the shaft's motion, such as dirt and debris or worn bearings. Short the windings together. On DC brush servos, there are two wires. On AC brushless servos, there are three wires. There should be a noticeable increase in drag, but you should still be able to spin the shaft with your fingers. Okay, so let's short the leads on this motor. It kind of freewheels when I let it go, so let me short them together. Okay, it doesn't freewheel as much. Yeah, there's definitely a drag on that. I can feel it. So let's check the, the newer servo dynamics motor. And you see it freewheels when I flip it there. And it stops. So there's drag on that one as well. So both of them pass that test. If there is no additional drag, you may have an open winding or bad magnets. If the resistance is not smooth but has skip spots, the motor is bad. Let's check real quick for skip spots. We'll just turn it and we'll, we'll see if it, uh, it's got the same amount of drag all the way around. We'll use this set screw as a, as a guide. Feels pretty much the same all the way. I don't feel any difference. Let's check the servo dynamics motor. Same thing, use a set screw. I don't feel any difference. It passes that test. It says if the resistance is not smooth but has skip spots, the motor is bad and I don't have any skip spots. Note, if all three windings of AC servos are not shorted together, the motor will appear to cog when turned. All right, resistance check. With a good quality ohm meter set on the lowest possible range, the following are typical motor winding resistances measured at the motor minus the resistance of the meter used. Okay, so what we need to do is we'll set this on ohms. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to short the meter leads together to check the resistance. These are high quality meter leads and as you'll see on my leads there's little to no resistance. So you would take that value and subtract it from the value that you get when checking the motor. Okay, and um, the tech bulletin gives the tech bulletin gives some examples for centroid motors. These aren't centroid motors, so I don't expect them to to be quite in line with those. But let's see what we get. It says given resistances for DC servos refer to the lowest measurable value at any point in the shaft's rotation. So let's clip on. The leads, we got 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 1 ohm, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. 
Got one point eight point nine point eight point nine point nine point eight point eight point nine point nine point eight point eight we're back to the top point eight okay let's take a look at the the newer servo dynamics motor point nine point nine point nine point nine point Point, point eight, point eight, point nine, point nine, point eight, point nine, point eight, point nine, point nine. Point nine, point eight, point nine, point eight, point nine, point nine, point nine, point nine. Point eight, point nine, point nine, point eight nine, <laughs> point eight, point. Do we get a seven there? No, point eight, point eight, point nine, point nine. Point nine, point nine, point eight, point nine, point eight. Looks like one there. Point eight, point nine. And then it says for given resistances for AC servos, refer to the resistances across any two windings and are independent of shaft position. If a motor winding is shorted, the measured resistance will typically be lower than that of a good motor. Here are comparison of similar motors can be very useful in diagnosing a problem. For motors with a damaged commutator or an open winding, there will be a lack of continuity. In the case of a damaged commutator or open winding on a DC brush servo, continuity will be lost when the brush passes over those areas. For an AC brushless servo with an open winding, there will be no continuity at any position. Now it says measure the resistance of any winding to the case of the motor. The measurement should be greater than 100 K ohms. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna ground to the motor flange of the good motor and then to one of the terminals. Okay, yeah, I've got nothing there. It's, it's clear, it's open there. Now, this is an anodized MS connector. This is not a really great place to, to clamp onto, but let's take a quick look at it. It's near, you can see there just by moving it. Now it's got good continuity. These screws would probably be 
just as good to use. These screws would be just as good to use for the test, so this one's good. So let's let's test this one. This is bare aluminum, so the casting, and then uh, let's let's see if I can clamp onto this. I can't, can't get a bite on that part of the frame. Um, this is aluminum here, so I'm going to go into the one of these openings here. I could probably use the front of this motor as well. Let's take a quick peek. It's kind of painted and you want a really good clean surface. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so that's a good surface. So let's, uh, let's test this one. Okay, we're at 10 meg ohms, so we're, we're fine. The, uh, the value is 100 K ohms. So this motor should be good. Let me check the other lead. Yeah, it's at 10 meg ohms to the, to the motor frame, so that should be good. All right. Again, we already checked this one. It's kind of what we call infinity. It's clear wide open. That's it. So these motors should be good to go. Uh, the issue is I've got to find an encoder. If I want to use this motor, I've got to find an encoder to fit uh, fit on here. All right, guys. Hope that helps you when you're testing your DC brush servos.